So it's now been 11 days with no car. I was going to get my uh, front wheel bearing fixed in the Toyota 4Runner truck and uh, coils and springs and stuff on the front of it. And uh, that's what happens when you prepay for the parts and give it to your buddy to fix. That uh, has a on-the-go mobile mechanic shop or whatever. So hopefully this is the last day that I have no car. I can get over to my carving tent and show you guys what's on the back of the chair and finish the chair. But so today I'm going to take a go at this piece. Yep, this is a lot of carving. Well, before any of you ask that are new to the channel, I got this green tape on my hand like this because, well, it saves your skin when you're carving. And it's just more comfortable for me when I know I'm going to be doing, 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 doing lots of carving, 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 carving. Normally, I just have the finger like this, but extra, extra, extra carving, I put it around there too. You'll see, this will get all dirty and wrinkled and broken in. <sighs> High spike. High spike. Now, this part here, this is a piece of root. I found on the beach, I believe, on Vancouver Island, probably, I don't know, four months ago. I think it was Vancouver Island. It's all rotten inside here. So this would be a root ball. So your root pieces would come off here, like down here. Then this your tree, small tree would come up here. I've carved some of these before. Um, they both turned out pretty neat, I think. You have to have an um, open imagination. For this um, type of carving, I have no type, no idea what type of wood this is. Let's just call it rotten wood. Don't know yet. So, like, for example, this right here could be like a skull nose. I could carve an eye in here, an eye in here, make it look like a skull. This, this stuff's kind of, we're going to put demon face, not demon faces, but we're going to put happy faces in here. We're going to put any type of face we can put in here. Like I, right here, I see kind of like another skull nose. Then I could put an eye here, eye here. You can even put a little bottom lip in there. So there's not going to be too much carving. Now, well, this is all rotten in here. All rotten. So, this might end up being a, la a lamp because we got all the wood in here. Show you the overhead. Got all the wood in here. I might clean some of that stuff up in there. Put a light under there. Who knows? But I think the most important thing to do when you're doing something like this is clean up the whole piece because things change. Once you get inside an old rotten thing like this, like all this wood inside here could yeah, look. Look how far that screwdriver went in there, right? Eh? It's way in there. Things change. So you want to carve off all the rot. That's the way I do it. There's little spider webs in here. Maybe some black widows will crawl out and bite me. Like that last piece that I carved there. This one. The Mr. Seaman or whatever. It had the friggin'. It had a. A friggin' worm inside it when I was carving it. A couple days later, it came out. That was a clam worm. Anyways, they call them something different in the UK. But uh, yeah, creepy shit falls out. Creepy shit gets in there. Creepy crawlies. Um, I won't bore you guys with me cleaning this up, but I will say that I'm going to be using my Fordham with the uh, quarter inch cut saw, extreme flame burr here. And yeah, we'll get her all cleaned up the best we can. And we'll see what happens. See what different kind of things that we see in there once it's all clean. Then we can start actually doing some carving. So you got to wear make sure you definitely wear your dust mask. 100%. I might cut this off. This might be a little bit too long. Anyways. So if you're going to get into something like this, I think you kind of need to try and find a deep connection to the piece. Like I said, you really got to open your mind. I spent about, I think it was probably maybe an hour and a half cleaning this up, even getting de deep down in there. This was just a thin crack before, but this was all punky wood inside of here. 
I done my best to get all the punky wood out, like the super soft, like wood, like foam. You know, deep carving inside here too. Let's get some better lighting in there. The seal inside there. So that's hard, but I got rid of all the soft wood. That's getting your Dremel. I use my Dremel too, flex shop, and going deep inside there with it, like. Way in there. So for the very beginning carvers, be careful because that's when you could break your flex shaft, right? If your bit jams up inside there. Even with my uh, Fordham deep inside here, cleaning all this up. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. But there's not, there's not much punky wood left. So here's the bottom of it. Clean most of that up. Most of the woods clean up. I can still see some gray stuff here. Not much green. That's what I was focusing on. Is the green, the uh, algae stuff. So how do you want to? How do you want this piece to sit? You know, like this. This just says it to me. Like this is what I want to do here. Now I was sitting drinking um, when I was done carving, drinking my coffee. Kind of looking at this piece and I had it set up. Where did I have it set up? Um, right here. So I, there's a hole in here that goes right. See the holes go right through to the inside of the wood too. So uh, I see kind of right here. I see like um, like th there's a hole here, but there's not a hole on this side. And see how this kind of bumps out? Nothing does that here. But um, I kind of looked at all the the area of this vision right here. So I kind of see like um, maybe just uh, don't forget this is just fantasy. I kind of see an eye there. So this would be like uh, kind of think like of a pig pig with pig cow kind of thing with a horn coming out of here. And this would be his nose. So maybe like oh eye there, and then we'll have to carve this out. So it's kind of like rotten in here. Lots of negative space. So you can see that. And now you can kind of see the, the nose. It could be a bear with a horn coming out. We're not going to have a horn on the other side, though. It doesn't matter. So then over here, like I said, I, th I thought I kind of saw a skull nose here. So what we we'll do up here? Whoa. Trying to make that, that like that's rotting out and all this wood up here will be gone because it's super thin. All you basically got left is the shell. Like see how thin that is? There's basically the shell, all the stuff in the inside was pretty well rotten. You know, some of it's still good. So then if we have that eye there. If we put a skull eye, eye here, will that confuse it with that eye? It's just about uh, opening up your imagination and try and make the piece work. Now down here, you can kind of see like another kind of weird creature with his nose down here. So if we open this eye up more. I think I'm going to base this piece, lots of like kind of skull eyes on this, on this piece. If it works, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not a big deal. It was a piece of free wood. Over here, I see like a little kind of creature with a couple eyes and then your the nose. So here's another one of those like uh, kind of skull things, right? Like a, a friggin' bear or a, a cow nose. Like if you look over here, you can see like there's a bottom lip right here, top of it. And you can put an eye up here for that, for different views, right? Um, this one you know so maybe you can get this eye put an eye right there and an eye right here I know if this is all over the map for people that are just new to this channel but so this eye will work for this side and it will work for this too so I'm just quickly drawing them on I'm probably going to hollow out the eyes I'll see what I can do so, but you see that there's an eye there and eye there for this one. But then you look at the side view, you got that bottom lip there or jaw bone or whatever. Then we'll make this eye work for that piece too. And here, some things will just be, I'll get to it. My, once I get carving, that's when my mind will really open up.
that's kind of how it works for me anyways. So that's kind of like a, looks like it's kind of laughing, like a laughing skull. You open up that bottom jaw there. The demon skull. Anyways, I'll do some more carving. I'm going to use my uh, Cutsall Extreme Flame Burr for this part. Um, this is my go-to burr here. And um, I run it on a Dremel 4000 with the uh, Dremel Flex Shaft. Yep. Sorry, I won't be doing much live carving on this because when I'm carving something like this, I just kind of go hard at it. And um, I listen to loud music. The uh, music really helps my uh, creativity go. So I'll be listening to the two uh, tool and some Pussifer when it's loud when I'm carving these eyes out. But we still got tons more to do. But see that? You got the thing there. Then you'll have the thing there with that eye connects these two pieces. But then you go over here and you're like, what? what? What's going on here? So then this eye will act like there's a thing here. And then this will be cut right out, and they'll all connect. That's what I'm. It's kind of like connecting the dots, maybe, whatever. That's all. So I went downstairs to my living room slash art gallery and grabbed this piece to show the new subscribers. This was one that I did a few years ago. Just all fantasy faces. That's kind of like a skull eye down there. Just to give you the idea of what I'm kind of going for with this piece, there's a wood spirit there. I do have to try and figure out uh, how to get a wood spirit in this one. There's like an org or something. Um, anyways, let me get the other one up here. All right, so I spent about uh, a good hour carving this. So when I was carving it, this it smells like the other type of wood. I think it's some kind of fruit wood. I'm not too sure. But when I was carving it, a bunch of pieces, like this would have been right there. But pieces kept on flying off. That's just some of them. So this is kind of what I've kind of come up with so far. Got that little skull thing in there. Um, little wood spirit in here. Uh, the eye for this thing here. And that one, like I said, would break out. So it's hollow. I just did an eye down here. I don't know, just kind of a hollow eye. I did another hollow eye up there. This is like the thing for the skulls broke off. So you kind of see what I'm going for. I don't, I'm not quite sure what I want to do here yet. Sometimes it's, sometimes less is more. You can see when I'm carving deeper in the wood, you're getting that yellow co coming out. It's not yellow cedar, but um, deeper you carve in, because that uh, this darker stuff's from the weathered. I've already cleaned it up with, with my Ford and with the cuts all bit, so you still get that gray on there, but the deeper you carve, like I said, it gets to be yellow. <sighs> oh, yeah, look at this eye. is going to go perfect right here. Look at that. That looks, that looks cool, I think. See that, like the nose and the, the eye in here? Then this eye will work for that side too. This is like a dragon right here. Oh, yes, it is. I'll probably carve this. I'll probably carve some lines in here so it kind of looks like a dragon. Doesn't Just carve Rob. There's the dragon. And um, I want to do a wood spirit on here somewhere. I just got to find it. I just got to figure it out. <laughs> That's what I got to do. I just got to figure it out. But um, this doing these pieces is um, definitely 100% really challenging yourself. So that's what I'm going to work on this part next. I, yeah, I got to incorporate it to that. Make it so that I work for this and this. Anyways. You know, lots of those, lots of the new subscribers are probably thinking, 
Man, is this uh, Curving Fusion Jordy Johnson guy lost his mind? Well, let me answer that for you. That was a long time ago. I lost my mind on that. So, long time ago. So what we got there is a pig nose, little bearded happy guy. So you can use this nose, connect it with that eye if you want. It's cut through there. There's some stuff down here. This eye, like I said, this eye connects with this piece. Um, I could do some more undercuts under here to separate it. This eye connects with this nose. This eye connects with the dragon thing there. There's this bottom thing there and the dragon's things. So however you want to interpret it, whatever that's the word, interp whatever the word is. Yep. So I got to try and find some room. I still don't know what I'm going to do down here yet. I still got to try and find, <laughs> I'm starting to like this piece. Oh, one thing that I didn't notice looking at the piece here. So I'm just going to show you how my mind thinks. So I'm looking at this piece and all that. You can see the shadow of the skull and the eyes and this. I got to still get a deer out and make that part come out. And you can see like a dragon's head or something coming down here. This eye can connect with that. But. The, this eye, these lines are, these lines in this eye for that nose are going the wrong way. So I'm going to curve those. If I don't cut through, I'm going to curve curve those off, and then I'm going to make those lines kind of go like this, so it connects that eye with that nose. And also here, see down here, I curved just a silly little simple thing. All right, so. But if I look at this piece, and this is just explaining how I do things, how my mind works. So if I cut this off here and go like this, and go like this, I can make it look like there's a kind of like a tooth there. And anyways, that's what we got so far. We have a special guest today. He hasn't been around for a long time. Grumpy Jesse, where you been? Hey, Jordy, how are you? Where you been, Grumpy Jesse? Well, I just got back into town. I've been gone for a year and a half traveling the world, and I'm finally broke. So I had to come back and see what you're up to, and yeah, it looks to me like to me you've still lost your mind. What's new, Jordy? Well, not too much, Grumpy Jesse. I've been stuck at home for the last... 10 days with no car, so I don't know. I'm curving this, and hopefully I get my car back tomorrow, and I go do a chainsaw carving. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll see you later, Jordy, and uh, hi, everybody. It's been a long time, and uh, I've just been uh, doing lots of blowing, bagging lots of hookers. Anyways, gotta go. Bye. <laughs> This wood spirit looks like he's got his mustache coming around, giving you the middle finger. Um, this has been a tricky piece of wood to carve. It's just soft spots, hard spots. It's just all over the map, but that's the fun about it. I'm pretty well done carving it. I want to say something like um, this is total fantasy. It's whatever. Oh, like I didn't know what to carve here. Um, the wood wasn't that good here. I saw this crack down here and I saw cracks down here. So what I did is I just carved an eye. Just did these things down here. And over here, I just did the carving fusion things. When I first, well, a couple years, when I first met Ryan Cook, the second time I met him, um, we were, he was showing me how to carve an owl. And uh, his best friend, uh, Kevin Lewis, Uncle Kevin, 
Ryan calls him. I call him Uncle Kevin too. He um, was helping me with my owl that Ryan was helping me with. Ryan went on to do his own thing. And we were talking. We just got talking about art and stuff like that. And I told him that um, I struggle with carving things that are sport like I, like I've struggled with owls. That's why I'm here getting you guys' help with this owl. Like even bears, I would struggle with bears. I'm sure I could eventually figure out how to carve them, but mentally it's a struggle for me. And I, I just love doing the wood spirits. He goes, well, Jordy, let me put it this way. Like I says that, and I, said, I also said, Kevin, I'm not a naturally born artist. Anything I've done is just from repetitive hard work and progress and over and over and over again. And he said, if you love wood spirits or fantasy, if you love doing the wood spirits, then keep doing the wood spirits and don't give a shit about trying to be a realism carver. There's enough carvers out there carving bears and stuff already. So just keep on. He goes, like, look how many subs I think at that point I had 30,000 subscribers. He goes, look how he goes, look how many subscribers you got. Like, I'm a professional chainsaw carver, and I got maybe he, – he, Kevin doesn't make that many videos, but he does have videos. Um, uh, Uncle Kev carves. But he says, just keep doing what you, you're doing. And that's another thing with Stephen. If it wasn't for Stephen Kenzora, um, <clears throat> Steve told me just to keep doing what I'm doing. And Steve's the reason that I actually reached out to Ryan and got some confidence to – um message Ryan and eventually go out there and carve with them. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And um, that's it. That's the bottom line. So I'm basically done carving. And I think I've carved this for four hours now. That's quite a bit of Dremel carving on this. Don't forget I had to clean up the wood first. I like that one right there. The sign and the way that's looking. This I could have done it better, but it's kind of hard enough. And the wood down here was really crappy. so. What I need to do now, so why I told that story about what Uncle Kevin said to me is you guys don't feel like you have to carve like other people. You know, like some of you might be looking at this thing and going, well, what is this piece of junk? Well, I don't think it's a piece of junk. I love carving stuff like this, and this is what I do. Um, do what you do. Do what you do to, to make that makes you happy, and don't um, – you're going to get those friends out there that are going to be like, what is it? Like, if you look at this, it looks like he's got an eye there, and this is a big hollow, rotten part of his eye. Lots of people are going to be like, what is it? And just You know what you need to say? Simple as this. So they get the point. It is whatever you want it to be. Yep. It is whatever you want it to be. So the other one, let me grab it here. The older one, I burnt it. Ow. Oh, no, I didn't hit myself, but I hit the carving. Did I break it? So I burnt it. I didn't spend that much time burning, but I burnt all the deep spots. Then I sanded it. I've already done some sanding on this. So that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to burn it in the deep spots. Then I'm going to sand it with this uh, little butane torch. I won't be filming. you, Everybody, when you burn the wood too, try to wear your dust mask because the smoke is toxic too. I still don't know what type of wood this is. It smells like fruity wood, though. It's actually, it smells exactly like that wood smelt like. So I'm going to burn it in all the deep spots in here. And then I'm going to hit it with my, I show this a lot, some sanding mandrel. This is like a um, really fine sandpaper. I think this is like 240 grit or something. See how soft it is? It's emery cloth. Yeah, well, it's 380 grit or something. But you see, I put a bunch of pieces forward. On the sanding mandrel, I put one backwards, so when I sand it, it gets to all sides. Turn your dremels down when you're using this. And then I'll go along with um, where this sander can't get in. This this is scotch bright, like auto body 3M scotch bright. And I'll get in there and really scuff it up so you get the high points on the eyes and stuff. Where's my favorite view? Right here. That view right there. I don't know about putting a light in this, but I know sooner or later I'm going to have to make some stands because this piece is like a, I don't know if I'll ever sell these pieces that I do like this. I got one more. I'll show you at the end of the video. It's not that great, but it's kind of, I just kind of keep them around my house so I can look at them and they give me ideas. 
But um, who knows? Maybe my friends or family will get these um, these ones when I die. Okay, so that was more wood burning than I thought because, well, you can see all here, but I forgot I had to wood, wood burn the inside of it too. And that's just smoke from this. So make sure you uh, don't burn your house down. Do the wood burning outside. Right, so I have sucked in a lot of friggin' dust today. Even though I was wearing my dust mask the whole time, it still gets through there. It still gets through. So this part's just kind of, this part, this piece part here where I was getting lazy kind of ruins the whole piece. That's okay. It can stay. It is what it is. That's still cool. Um, the burning, lots of this wood, I said earlier, was punky. I tried my best to get most of the punky wood off, which means rotten. But um, some of it just melted away. This wood basically, even the harder wood that's, that's still good, was pretty soft. Like that eye. Look how that whole thing's gone in there. So you got to be careful when you're doing the wood burning. Because, well, this eye is pretty good down here, but this side, meh. Um, it's got to be careful when you're doing wood burning because you can um, freaking burn away lots of your detail. All right. So, antlers, deer antlers. You guys, I don't know, some of you longtime subscribers remember like a few years back when I went to the estate auction, I got the whole bucket full, a whole big, huge bin full of deer antlers, different antlers from around the world. Well, I've got like 200 of these things. So I figured I'd do cut this one. Maybe I should carve a deer antler eagle one of these days. Little one, just like this, so I can sit like this. Eagle head. Um, I'm going to cut this. This one does have the stain. Actually, I should. this one's pretty good. It's pretty clean. But this one has like a finished finish stain thing on it lots of them don't but this is just the one i grabbed i'm going to mark this and i'm going to cut it with a wall tile cutter bit that's what these are you get them on amazon and um fit it into place <laughs> So I got the antler in good. I burnt it. Um, I've carved lots of antler, lots of bone. I'll do antler carving soon. Um, it's still hollow in here. So I'm going to, I don't have any here. I put it in, but uh, I'm going to put some uh, epoxy sculpt in that hole there. Fill that in and make it so it looks like it's kind of growing out of the thing. So, yeah. That was a lot of carving. This was about, um, I'd say, I don't know. Fully carving, burning, everything, cleaning, carving, burning, everything about six hours. Now's the time you kind of just sit back. You look at your piece. You decide what you like, what you don't like. I like these. It looks like there's a head here and then a twin up top here. There's two heads in there. Skull's kind of neat. That's how it started. Um... This, there's just so much to see. There's just, when you do something like this, that's why I said at the beginning of the video, it's good to have an open mind. Like some people might not even see that wood spirit down there because they might be looking up here, right? I'm probably going to sooner or later try and get a, a light inside here. I'm going to also have to get a base so it, whoever, somebody gets this we'll have, have can spin it on the base like i like this side down here i just don't i'm not a fan of the other side this is neat i think it's all neat it's just it's just different and there's nothing else like it in the world <laughs> most of you are probably thinking i'm freaking crazy 
that's my favorite view right here. This uh, side thing. It looks like a skull, like a weird alien skull with the eye looking at you this way. That's my least favorite part right there. Don't really care. It's there. I can cut it off. I can do whatever I want to do. I can change it whatever I want. So I hope this. there's probably not too much about carving to learn on this video besides how to um, open up your mind and just go for it and get get shit done. Um, I'm not going to put a finish on this right now, but what we're going to do is I got some water here. And it's going to be a while before because I'm going to go and hopefully get my car back soon here and get go chainsaw carving, finish that chair. Let's do a water test. Let's see how it looks with the water. Oh, look at that. Look how much cooler it looks. Everything kind of blends in together better. Let's head over here. Once again, I don't know what type of wood this is. I signed it right here, yes. I gave him the prison host Jordy tattoo. Jordy signature. Let's just soak her down. So there you go. See how it, everything kind of blends in together once you put the finish on it. So I probably will put a clear finish on it. I thought about even epoxying it. Right there. Yeah. And that's cool too. Like a dragon thing. And its eyes looking straight down. So it all connects. You gotta have some silly ones like this guy's just a silly happy guy in there. Anyways, this is probably boring, you guys. Hope it gives you some uh ideas to open up your mind and just um carve deeper, man. Carve deeper. Carbon fusion, over and out.